Hola, and welcome to Spanish Answers, a podcast that gives you unas yapitas claves as you unlock your Spanish language adventure. I'm your host, Sarah, with Language Answers, and today in episode 88, we're going to go over some book recommendations for your littles. This past month has been particularly busy with work projects and house projects and just basically everything. So today's episode is something fun. 11 Spanish book recommendations for little kids. Whether you're gearing up for the start of school or just want to interact with your little one in Spanish, this episode is for you. I was going to begin our cultural tip series on Honduras this week, but instead decided to include one more book to the list, making it a nice 11 instead of an even 10. Hopefully you enjoy this, so let's get started. Now, just a quick note, this episode includes affiliate links to Amazon, and in essence, what this means is that no extra charge to you, I receive a small commission if you choose to purchase the product using my link. And you can check out my disclosure policy, I will include a link in the show notes. Anyways, I only recommend products this way that I have bought and or used myself and have found to be useful. So let's go ahead and get started with our 11 book recommendations. Here are several books that I or my husband have really enjoyed reading with our toddler. Some of them are definitely for little kids, but I think others would be enjoyed by slightly older kids, maybe six or seven. I would recommend seeing if your local library has any of these first so that you can try them out for yourselves before committing to buying them. But if you'd like to buy more Spanish books, I have included affiliate links to Amazon for each book. That being said, Amazon is not always the cheapest option. So... My husband and I, we always check out Amazon, Thrift Books, and even eBay to find the best deals. And sometimes your local used bookstore will have some really delightful surprises. You never know. I once found a grammar book for and two children's books in Welsh. Really random. And of course, if you'd like to support the authors, there's always the option to buy new from places like Barnes & Noble or a local bookstore. If you would like more Spanish resource recommendations, please check out my free Spanish language resource library and, of course, link in the show notes. So let's start with six books that are for little ones. They're really geared towards little children. Think board books, maybe zero to three years old. I'm not an expert on age ranges and reading levels, so just bear that in mind. These age recommendations are all guesses. The first one is Buenas Noches a Todos by Sandra Boynton. I love Sandra Boynton's charming kids books like Barnyard Dance. This used to be one of my daughter's favorites. It was great for teaching her the animals in American Sign Language, you know, ASL and in Spanish. And there's also her personal penguin, which we first learned about when some friends of ours did the song with their daughter and it was adorable. So when I saw that our library had Boynton's books in Spanish, I was delighted. Buenas noches a todos is one that my little girl really enjoyed reading, even though she didn't know all of the words in Spanish. It's a sweet book with fun illustrations about a bunch of animals on a boat getting ready for bed. The next one is Chica Chica Boom Boom by Bill Martin Jr. and John Arkambault, illustrated by Lois Elert. Alert, and I apologize to all of these authors and illustrations if I butcher your name. I'm so sorry. Anyways, I stumbled upon this book by accident, as the cover didn't really entice me. But as they say, you can't judge a book by its cover. This is a delightful board book about the lowercase little letters racing to the top of a coconut tree and the ensuing crash and recovery as they all fall out. It's a great way to learn the Spanish alphabet, and they include Enye in this Spanish translation. And it's got a fun rhythm and rhyme. Third is Quien Se Comió Mi Fruta by Canizales. This is another book I wasn't expecting to like, but ended up loving. The main character is a cat who is very hungry and excited to eat his fruit. But lo and behold, he finds out that his friends have eaten each one. This book was great for teaching my toddler Spanish and ASL words for fruit and the phrase Quien Se Comió. Number four is Madeline by Ludwig Bimelmans. For anyone who grew up reading this classic, Madeline is lovely. My toddler enjoys the shorter books. There are some, after all, like Madeline in London that are too long for her. And I was delighted to find a Spanish version. While I don't think the poetry is as good as the English version, it still has a nice cadence and the illustrations are fun for both children and adults to look at. 
I enjoy trying to figure out the different landmarks from Paris personally. Number five is Bebe Goes Shopping by Susan Middleton, Elia, and illustrated by Stephen Salerno. This also was a surprising find. My library has quite a few unexpected gems. The artwork is a bit whimsical, but I love that this book is a mix of both English and Spanish, and you can generally pick up on what the Spanish means from the context. I just checked this out from the library again, and my daughter had me read it three times in one day. She would probably have asked for it more, but thankfully she got distracted. Now, this book is the reason my daughter amused our church community with her talk of chocolate-covered pickles at Children's Church. So just be aware, it is a fun book. Number six, La Araña Muy Ocupada by Eric Carle. Now, Eric Carle's books are amazing classics. You know, think The Very Hungry Caterpillar, one of the most famous classic children's books out there. And this book is no different. This is another one of my daughter's favorite books to get from the library, and I love it because it shows the different sounds that farm animals make in Spanish. The only thing I don't like is the book's translation of Rooster, but that's an easy thing to fix when you're reading aloud. All right, so that covers our six books for geared towards really little children. Let's talk about five books for slightly older ones. And again, I'm not an expert on age ranges and reading, but I think the following books can be enjoyed both by little ones and slightly older ones. So maybe zero to five or even zero to seven. The fact that they are great tools for learning more Spanish extends the reading age, I think. And truthfully, some of these I enjoy reading as an adult. So there you go. The first one is Paletero Man by Lucky Diaz, illustrated by Micah Player and translated by Dr. Carmen Tefola. Now, this book was a nominee for the Indiana Early Literary Firefly Award, and I've included a link if you want to you know, research what that actually means. And just like Bebe Goes Shopping, Paletero Man is a mix of Spanish and English where the context tells you what the Spanish words mean. My favorite part is where the protagonist lists all of the different paleta flavors, and these are a bit harder to get. You would have to use a dictionary, I think, rather than rely on context completely, as some of the flavors are a bit more exotic. There is a live song that you can listen to, and I have included the link in the show notes, but I actually don't like it, and so I try not to think about it as I read the book out loud. But the book is lovely. The book itself is lovely. Number two, Vamos a Casar un Oso by Michael Rosen, illustrated by Helen Oxenbury. This book was a key figure in my childhood, and I love passing on the tradition of going on a bear hunt with my little girl. I can't wait until my baby boy is old enough to join in. Because this book is so important to me, I actually cried when a friend gave me both the English and Spanish versions. The Spanish version is not a direct translation, although it does stick pretty close most of the time to the original, but it is still a delight in its own way. My favorite part of the translated version is seeing all the different sound effects. They are pretty different in Spanish. Number three, Vamos, Let's Go Eat by Raul III, Colors by Elaine Bay. This is the latest find we've found. My husband really enjoyed reading it and he does not speak Spanish, but the text often repeats itself in English and Spanish and the illustrations are crazy fun. There's so much to look at while you're reading it. But it is also full of many Mexican dishes, which makes me want to dive into more recipe hunting. This book is full of vibrant Mexican culture and is simply a visual feast, making it a great book for kids. Apparently, this is part of the Vamos series, so I'm hoping to delve more into it. If the rest of the books are as interesting as this one, it'll definitely be worth my time. Number four is Debo Compartir Mi Helado by Mo Willems, translated by F. Isabel Campoy. One of many Elephant and Piggy books, this one is perhaps my daughter's favorite of the Spanish editions. She is obsessed with Piggy and Elephant. I know this book very well. One of my favorite parts is when Geraldo describes his ice cream and the words fit into a kind of ice cream shape. The great thing about this book series is that it is simple enough for little kids to understand, but is also geared towards slightly older kids practicing their reading skills. And since it is so repetitive, it's a good tool for learning more Spanish. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have number five, Nos Fuimos Todos de Safari, Una Aventura de Números por Tanzania, by Lowry Krebs, illustrated by Julie Cairns. This book is a fun way to introduce your kids to animals and landmarks in Tanzania, as well as the Swahili language, and all through Spanish. 
I really enjoy reading this to my child. The illustrations are interesting, but the cultural insights and glimpses of a very different place are a great way to introduce your kid to the world. And that wraps up our 11 book recommendations. So tell me, do you have any favorites? If so, please share them with me at contact at languageanswers.com. And I will see you in two weeks. In our next episode, we will finally begin our cultural tip on Honduras. So make sure you stay tuned. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you once again for your patience. I know this is out a day late again. Just just a lot of projects to get done. But please don't forget to check out the show notes for links to the resources used for this episode. And if you'd prefer to read an approximate transcription of today's episode, you can also visit the episode's blog. I would love to help you on your Spanish journey. So if you have any questions about today's episode or even just on Spanish culture or grammar, you can reach me at contact at languageanswers.com or visit my website for more information. I can also be contacted regarding my services for Spanish to English translation, English technical writing, editing, and content creation, or even language consultations and tutoring for you or your business. Remember, learning a language is a lifelong journey. So please, aprovechalo, disfrútalo, y compártelo. I'll see you in two weeks. Hasta luego! Hasta luego!